So we're going to be talking about us, you know, starting with Jesus Christ, starting new beginning with Christ. So I want you to turn to each other and say to each other and tell him that you have already received much blessing. And not that I wish you much blessing, you have already received much blessing. Knowing that God will bless you already in 2019. So what we need to remember is that Holy Spirit it remains in you and that Holy Spirit will allow you to see and to hear and to be obedient to the God's calling that He has and prepared for you. You know, in Korea, a lot of the new, uh, when the companies, they do like a training, uh, they use this. Genghis Khan, the Mongolian uh, leader, said this. Don't complain about how bad your household is. When I was nine, I lost my father and I was kicked out of my town. Don't say how poor you are. I was eating rats to survive and putting my life at the battlefield. Don't say um, that you're born with a small, uh, in a small, you know, household. Um, I not only did not have any friends. We had only hundred thousand soldiers, and you know, including all the elders and kids, we only had two million people. Don't say how bad you were educated. Um, don't say that you have no other option. I was struck with sword and in fact I had an arrow you know, that was shot in my face. Um, and I, moved every, I removed everything about uh, myself that limited myself. And then when I removed all those th limitations, I became Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan. You know, this, all these things that he said um, sounds amazing. It sounds really great, but we as Christian actually need to be actually very careful about things that we hear. And and when we lay down things before um, and empty ourselves, it's not just emptying everything um, about physically, about my, my own ability things, but it has to be in according to gospel. When we lay, when we empty ourselves, it's not just we're not done by just emptying ourselves. We have to receive things, but that are given by God. We need to fill that up after we empty ourselves, and what we need to fill that up is what's the important part is. So as we face this 2019, I'm going to tell you about what we need to fill ourselves up uh, as we face this new year. The first thing is that word is life and Christ is the light of uh, mankind so in the beginning it says you know the word was with God and the word was God in the beginning and in verse 3 to 5 you know there was nothing um, until you know God said to be things um, the way that he wanted to be the important thing here, the important thing that John is telling us is that God is light and he was the beginning and he is the word and he is the truth. You know, John doesn't explain to us, he doesn't try to give evidence of why God is our life. John does not tell us why God is our light um, or like how his life is, uh, is, is the truth. He doesn't try to explain those things. The Bible tells us, and what John is saying is, it's it's a proclamation. It's saying that God is light, God is the strength, God is hope. It's a proclamation. It's There's no doubt, there's no even need to explain these things, because that's how Scripture is. It is the truth. What light is, it's... What light is, it lights up everything when you have that light. No darkness in this world cannot be shone uh, when there's a light. And that's the thing. When you have Christ, it shines up out outwardly. So there's, 
So we, as we are hearing John's word and this reading the scripture, there is one of the two that we have to decide. It's either we take this words with as a truth that God is light, that the light He is a strength, and that He is a hope. It's either we accept that fact, or we completely deny it. It's one or the other. So what John is saying, if you have the Son, you have life, and if you do not have the Son, you do not have life. You know, as we face this new year, ask yourself, what is the thing that we have to have in our heart as we look into this new year? You know, Jesus tells us, you know, I am the light of this world. So if you receive me, you know, if you follow me, I am here so that I can get you out of the darkness. You know, if you believe in Jesus, then please believe that you have the light, that your ways are light, lit up, that you will be able to shine upon the darkness because you have received Jesus Christ and you have Him in your spirit, in your heart. You know, many of you ask, you know, about the New Year uh, resolution. You know, some people say, oh, I'm going to lose a lot of my weight this year. Or another person say, you know, I'm going to work hard to get a new house. You know, but the important question is this. You know, the, the starting point is what the important thing. You know, whether you're trying to get a new house, whether you're trying to marry, whether you're trying to uh, lose weight. But the start of everything needs to be receiving Jesus, who is the light, who is the life. You know, that's the first priority to take that as a first starting point and then going forth with other, desti other destination. That needs to be your priority and starting from that point on, that needs to reflect upon your other resolutions. So then, what does it mean to start with Christ? So John, John explains that in the beginning was the Word, so the beginning of this sort of we're, we're kind of we're, this is actually a little bit different from the you know the the version where they say the in Genesis when the beginning God created the heaven and the earth but the, in our scripture here today in John the the word beginning is a little bit different it's just it's something we cannot fathom we cannot understand but it's talking about the eternal past that Jesus was there already even before the time began. And what, what what he's referring to is because of that eternal past that Jesus was already there, he already trying to emphasize on the fact that the, uh, emphasizing the fact that everything that we do in our life, whatever the starting point is, it's the light, it's the Jesus Christ. And from that on, from that light is where everything needs to start. And having that is our hope and having that is our priority to face each new day with Jesus Christ as a light who was already from the beginning, not something that just happened in the middle. So what we need to do in 2019, what we need to do is every single moment, every single time, we need to be reflecting on Jesus Christ's words and have Him and re listen to His voice in making any decisions we do. And we're not talking about just one month of the year. We're not just talking about every Sunday. We're talking about every single day, every single moment, every single morning when you wake up, the first thing you need to do is to start the day off with Jesus Christ. You know, yesterday um, was our first uh, all-family morning prayer Saturday uh, meeting. You know, we purposely didn't give an announcement uh, because, you know, we kind of said it, you know, here and there previously, but we didn't give, like, official announcement last week just to see, you know, how many of our family, how many of our church members actually come to that morning prayer meeting on Saturday, our first Saturday of the, of the month of the year. And we're trying to emphasize this whole family Saturday church morning prayer meeting and the importance of our children to learn the faith and learn uh, to start off the day with Jesus Christ when that is the priority of our, our life.
you know, the other day I was looking at a YouTube and there was something funny. And this pastor was giving a sermon and then it was explaining why we don't do such thing. You know, first, like, why we don't do the morning prayer meeting, why we don't, we don't pray out loudly, where, you know, you know, this pastor was explaining the reasons about why we don't, our church doesn't, that church doesn't do uh, the prayer meeting. He was explaining that, you know, the reason why Korean churches do this prayer meeting is because, you know, during the, in the Korean, um, as their Christianity was developing, there was a lot of hard time, the struggles that they were going through. So then they started their morning prayer meeting and, and that's how they became such a good blessing. You know, when I heard that, I was so frustrated. So even the fact, even if that was true, you know, when did they when they started that morning prayer meeting, you know, who actually started it? Who allowed that to happen so that the Korean churches grew so big and so so much? It's God who provided that, God who allowed it, you know. So, you know. But I want you to take a look at the Bible, the the. The, the scripture gives us all these amazing miracles and things, uh, God's work that happened early morning. You know, Jericho wall fell, you know, when um, it, during the morning time. Um, the Red Sea split apart during that morning time. You know, Jesus woke up early in the morning to pray. You know, and God says he will guide you and help you in that early morning time. That's what the Bible says. And the Bible describes Jesus as, as a morning bright star. And that's the important thing. The, even the scripture says how important it is the, to start off the day, a new day, with just focusing on Jesus only. To start the day with prayer. To start off with the word. So I encourage you to please come every Saturday uh, as our whole family morning prayer meeting time, especially at least first month, the first Saturday of the month. It is so important, extremely important, to spend and to give that first moment before it's Jesus and allowing our heart and our ears and just uh, to hear His voice as we listen and and look for him at the first day, the first moment that we wake up each day. You know, think about it. The past, you know, is past. And tomorrow we haven't come yet. You know, from by t from from the past, yes, we learn our experiences pat, mi from the mistakes. And the future, we have a hope. Yes, that's correct. But today is what's important. Today is when we need to start off with the prayer. Today is when we need to start off with the word. That's what shapes the tomorrow. And so today we need to change. And today we need to be focused, fixated. You know, some people explain, you know, oh, you know, Pastor, I live like an hour away. I cannot come to the morning prayer meeting. You know, then go to the nearby church. You know, it's okay if you don't come to our church. Um, and if you, there is no churches around you, then just wake up and spend that time and start off with the prayer, start off with the scripture in your house, in your own room. So please do that in the morning prayer meeting. So the second thing that what it means to start off with Christ, uh, the second thing is that you must embrace Christ every time and everywhere and, and every moment, okay? So whatever you're doing, whatever decision you're making, whatever choice you're trying to make, don't ask yourself, but ask God. You know, if just, you know, the famous thing, you know, what would Jesus do? Ask that. You know, every decision, even if it's the smallest decision like eating breakfast or whatever it is, ask what would Jesus do in this situation? You know, what another word if i do this would lord be pleased if i make this choice would god be glorified please if i do this um you know what would god be pleased that's what i want you to ask yourself each time you make any decision even the smallest decisions in our daily life and after you make that choice you know if so that you'll be able to proclaim that this is what god was pleased uh, for me by making this decision we need to be so prepared. We need to be uh, faithful enough to be able to make those 
decisions. You know, if we make choice despite knowing what God would not want to do, want you to do, you know, I don't want you to be making decisions that are total against God. Especially in our third, in our current service right now, you know, you guys are strong in faith, and I pray and I hope that you will be asking God, you know, what would you do, Jesus, in this moment? What, you know, if you are asking, you know, what should I take this business? Should I split from this person? Should I love this person? Should I hate this enemy? You know, whatever decision you're trying to do, ask Jesus. What would Jesus do? And in order for you to make the right decision and hear God's voice in making decision, you need to get into the Scripture. That's the way that God speaks to you. You know, especially I lift up, I bring, encourage people to join us on Wednesday the the the, the new um, specialized seminars about the gospel. You know, please I encourage you to come join. And as you come, face and get into the word learn more about the word hear more about the scripture the more you do god will continue to speak to you you'll be softened and you'll be able to truly experience god's amazing miracles in your life the scripture today says that darkness has overcome but it could not overcome the light of Jesus you know despite how dark things may be when there is a light it brights up that room you know if it may you know despite how dark a night was you know when the Sun rises everything lights up right so if you despite how dark how failed you are in your heart but if you embrace Jesus who is the light of the world who is the life then you will be lit up in your heart allowing that life that lights into your heart first as a priority and then thinking about I'm going to be studying or dating or making some de decision so I want you to have that priority straight there is a steps there is no one in this world who can beat that light you know how whatever the darkness whatever the sins there are there is nothing that cannot defeat that light that source of light will lit up everything it will help to destroy the arrogance and you and he will give you the new blessing and the new miracles and you'll be able to control your failures control your arrogance that you you had even the people you know, even Paul, who was a killer of Christians, you know, when he received the light, he became a he became a new man, and that's because he has met Jesus Christ, the light, who's changed his life. You know, we fail so much. You know, we fall over and over and over again. But when you embrace Jesus, when He becomes the light of your body, then trust me your life will change you know even if I get um, blamed on even if other people accuses me you know despite all of the situation you'll still be able to defeat the, the difficulties when you have Jesus in 2nd Corinthians 4 6 for God who said let light shine out of darkness made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the God's glory displaced but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all suppressing power is from God we heard possessed from every side but not crushed perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not abandoned struck down but not destroyed this is from 2 Corinthians 4, 9. And the reason why we are able to claim this is because Jesus, is, the light of Jesus is embraced in our heart. And because of that, we have the ability and the strength to be able to fight the darkness that faces us. Are you struggling today? You know, it's not about personality. It's about faith. It's about taking that faith and the voice of God and embracing that into your heart when God's face fulfills and, and lifts up and is filled in our heart then your life will change 
God knows us. God knows all our thoughts. And you can claim well, well, God says that I have defeated the world. So if you embrace God, then you will be able to defeat the world. In 2019, I pray and hope that you'll be victorious by embracing God. But the important thing, the most important thing is right now. Of course, being with Christ, starting with Christ means you wake up and you start with the word and we start with the prayer. And then truly embracing Jesus in your heart. But the most important thing is to solely give all my life before God. So that's the fourth thing. You have to give your whole life to God. You know, your life, your heart, your possessions, everything, you give it into the hand of God. So I'm, I'm, next week I'm actually going to be praying, uh, giving a sermon about the God's Jesus' miracles. You know, the, if there was this uh, the wedding, and you know that during that wedding they they ran out of wine, and Maria, you know, told uh, Jesus. So Maria told Jesus, uh, "See, Jesus, we are out of wine," and then kind of just like gave that task to him and Jesus performed the miracle of turning water into wine now the thing to think about you know about the other story is that when the child came with two fish and five loaves of bread and gives gave it to Jesus he just purely gave it to Jesus with expectation when you give just 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 out of your pure heart you just give it before the Lord then God will do the miracle God will take care of you he made water into wine he changed he fed the 5,000 with the two loaves of fish uh, two fish and five loaves of fish so what does it mean to just give it before the Lord let us listen to this one praise song Time. 
Think about it, Josephine, Jochebed. If she uh, didn't trust the Lord and floated Mo Moses down the river, but instead of trusting God, if she embraced Moses and kept her by herself, trying to protect her herself, you know, do you think Moses became the Moses that he is that we know? You know, would God have used that? You know, when we go to the dental dentist, you know, you go to the dentist and you trust the dentist to do the, the work that he needs to do. So same thing, if you gave your life before the Lord, if you trust Him, you need to trust Him fully and let Him take control of your life. You know, brothers and sisters, God gave you another year, new year, a new opportunity ask yourself how are you going to this new how are you going to live this new year of course it's important to keep yourself healthy to work hard for your business get married but most importantly what's the most important thing the priority is to lay your life before the lord and trust him and allow him to be your master and guidance through him embracing jesus is the most important thing and allowing him to make decisions for you is the priority. You know, your life is not your own. Our life belongs to the Lord. We have to give our sons and, and daughters before the Lord. You know, before you can give your children to God, you need to give yourself to God. You know, before you enforce your children to pray, you need to be praying your life uh, yourself. You need to be reading the scripture yourself. So today, I want to, to confess before the Lord and say, tell, tell Him, Lord, I trust you. I, will, I give you my life. Help me to trust you fully. When you give your life totally, God will tell you, you know, I love you, son. I love you, daughter. Take my hand. Come with me. The grape vines have bared its fruits, so please, so take my hand and come with me. Is what God's voice, God's calling to you is. So when you trust Him, when you give your life to Him, give your life to Him, and give your children's life to Him, just like, uh, just like jo Joseph Ed Ed gave, trusted the Lord and floated Moses down the river riverbed fully trusting in the lord that he will have planned for him despite how difficult that decision may be despite how struggle that things may be fully trust in him only and to start your day off with the prayer start your day off with the word and to fully trust him and know that he will guide you he will get you victorious let us pray Loving God, thank you so much. Lord, despite all our faults and fears and, and things that we do, you still loved us, you still saved us, you still delivered us. And so we thank you, Lord. Lord, my life, my family, everything I have, I give it to you and I trust you. Would you lead us to the right path? You, would you guide all of our ways 
that as we listen to your word, as we listen and pray, help us to be obedient to your words and help us to um, just trust you in everything that we do. Help us to be able to confess on that judgment day that everything was by your grace because of your grace and mercy for us we have been able to live this life help us that to be our confession all this thing in the name of jesus we pray amen